because I'm a little bit sad. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Why? Oh, yeah. Your boyfriend's gone. Talk is cheap, motherfucker. Talk is cheap. Yeah, Josh Reynolds did not sign a cheap deal. No, he did not. Uh, two years, $14 million assigned to Denver Broncos. Up to $14 million, I should say. We've had the Three arguments. Cash, uh, I thought he was more valuable to this team a lot more than a lot of other people. I know Dosa Dion I was speaking to a little bit before the show, trying to get him on last minute. We'll just do that next week, or we'll figure something out with that situation. But he's upset, too. I think – I do think that Ben Johnson could cook up a hell of an offense for damn near any receiver. I, don't get me wrong. And I, Spinny, I, I saw your post about DPJ. I'm assuming you're going to talk about that, too. But I just – I guess I found comfort in knowing what to expect from a Josh Reynolds – and that he, he did show up in big moments. I, I'm pretty sure he touched down in the, the playoff game against the, the Rams. If not, he had a hell of a first half. I know that for damn sure. You know, I think it was Laporta got the touchdown. And then he, had a, he did have a touchdown against the Buccaneers. I'm talking about the playoff Buccaneers. Like, he was one of the more reliable pieces on this receiving core. Like, I, you guys can make all the faces you want, but he just was. And I know, like, it takes JG a minute to get, or at least the receivers to get uh, adjusted to a, a, a JG. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just saying that off the top. Like, I'm not talking my ass here. We had all pro wide receiver Herman Moore on the show, which we got to get that back soon. But he, we talked about it, like, because let's be real. He does throw a little bit of a wobbler, and they are harder to catch. That's not me saying that. It's Herman Moore saying they are harder to catch. But regardless, at the end of the day, it's your job as a receiver to get that done. I think we've seen this with J-Mo take a little bit of a while. I think maybe the argument may be there for Amaral St. Brown when we go to his rookie year, but that's also his rookie year, different offensive coordinator and play call for the first half. But I, I do think this is uh, – it's a disappointment for me. I'll put it to you that it's way. It's a disappointment? You're disappointed in who? The, them for not re-signing him to $7 million? No, 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 because like Brad's not going to pay for, up to $14 million for yeah, Josh Would Reynolds. you have paid that, though, if you were in Brad's situation? No, no. I mean, honestly, I, I, I don't know how they're doing the cap situation. Because to me, it's kind of weird. You're the, the 10th team in the cap space, and you're still kind of reluctant to, to spend it. Even though we are talking about acquiring... Uh, Carlson Davis, they're like, we got to see if we could uh, afford his cap hit for this year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, you're like top 10 in cap. Right, what do you mean? You got to see if you can afford the cap hit. You get 40 plus million available when that happened. But uh, I would have done it, yeah, just because I think you're right there. And I, I kind of agree with Dan Campbell, especially with, with this system and, and this quarterback that like you need some guys that are just cohesiveness. You, you need the chemistry there. I would have been more comfortable with that. Now, if you still want to add to that, I'm all for it. I, we, we were talking about that all leading up to this. Like, what wide receiver? We were Licking our chops, excited about it. I think now we could be even a little bit more excited because it feels like it's going to happen for sure. But I don't want to discredit your guy, D- DPJ. Yeah, and I just look at it as next year in this offense, Josh Reynolds would have been the sixth option. He's behind Amon Ross St. Brown, Jameson Williams, Sam Laporta, and both running backs. In mind. So I'm not paying the sixth option on an offense $7 million a year. But he, but he wasn't. He would be. Ne- he, this If he no. was on this team going into next year, he would be the sixth guy I look at when I'm when I'm drawing up plays. He would be the sixth person you draw up a play for. That's that's I, I love you. Is that not true? It's not true. How is that not true, Steven, It's absolutely not. You true. draw? Are you drawing up plays? <laughs> for, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing up plays for Amon Ross St. Brown. You're drawing up plays Jameer for Josh Gibbs, too. Yes, he'd be just as productive David as he's Montgomery, been. Sam Laporta and Jamison Williams all before I'm drawing up a play for Josh Reynolds. You're not. I'm telling you, you're not. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I am. I, I am. Because all well, of those well, you players are, are yes, but but them and what they do, no. Josh Reynolds is 100 percent a piece of that. Like you don't think even if Josh Reynolds was on this team this year, you think Jameson Williams would have took a backseat to him? I think there'd been more intermediate routes drawn off of Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I think deep shots. And, Who like, would have been the rounds. wide receiver two next year if Josh Reynolds is on this team? Jameson Williams or Josh Reynolds? I think there's expectations from fans of, of Jameson Williams to be wide receiver two. I, I think Dan Campbell kind of spoke to. Yeah, he's getting better. I don't think Dan Campbell outright said that. I mean, even just like the press conference he did at the Combine. I don't think he even said that he's going to be a starter for sure. He's like, yeah, he's working his way towards it. Like, I don't think they view him as that. I know we do as fans because we have the expectation of him as a 12th overall pick in the entire NFL draft, a guy that they traded up to acquire. But I just don't think that's the way it was. And then I think I could point to, like, literally the offense last year when Jamison was back. And then once he did still keep going. Yeah. Like, and perfect example, right? Jamo kind of merged in the back half of the season, I'd say. But in the playoff game against the Rams, the first playoff game at home, nerves on 10 for everybody. Mm-hmm. First playoff win for our opportunity went to, to get a playoff a win. Yeah. Yes. But Nick's perfect example of when Jamison Williams was on and off the field and looking at the splits that Josh Reynolds brought to where when Jamison Williams was off the field, Josh Reynolds was averaging 70 yards a game. And when he's on the field, he's averaging 28. 70 like, yards a game is nothing to sneeze at either, though. When Jamison Williams was off the field, that's what he was averaging. When yeah. Jamison Williams was on the field and a part of the offense, he was only averaging 28 yards a game. 
That's because Jamison Williams is a better receiver. I don't Jamison think Williams that's, is, I don't Jamison I, Williams I don't would have been wide receiver two on this team, no matter if Josh Reynolds is here or not next year. I'm expecting him to step up. Josh Reynolds was wide receiver three on this on this team this year. I'm not worried about, or I'm not paying a wide receiver three seven million dollars a year. And what Donovan Peoples Jones brings to the table, I think he can step up and be a wide receiver three in the Ben Johnson offense. Do I still want them to draft a receiver? Do I still want them to get a Xavier Leggett or a Brian Thomas Jr. or someone like that? Yeah, that would be awesome. And that's what Brad likes to do is go best player available. And there's going to be a lot of very good receivers yeah. at 29. There's going to be a lot of great options at 29 to catch the ball. And we already know that the Lions and Brad Holmes have met with those two guys I mentioned in Brian Thomas Jr. and Xavier Leggett. But I'm not stressed about worrying losing Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not freaking out about losing Josh Reynolds. Would I have liked would I have liked him here? Yes. Would I have liked him here at seven million dollars a year? No. Congratulations. Go get your bag. Have fun. Have fun in, in Denver. And by the way, too, I'm not I'm not overly stressed about losing Josh Reynolds. I just there's peace in having Josh Reynolds because you know what this offense is with Josh Reynolds. And and to the the to people listening, three one three Kurt, I he's saw not you comment the already. Straw that stirs he's just the drink, he's just saying though. this because of content. That's absolutely not the case at all. I know I will, you guys will never see it that way because as as fans of Jameis Williams, he has a huge following, twelfth overall pick. I get that, but when you look at the actual production of what he provided, it was more than what Jameis Williams provided. And I could say that Jameis Williams has a higher upside as a, as a wide receiver than Josh Reynolds. I would agree to that, Spinny, but I wouldn't say he's a better wide receiver at the moment. And and that's like with them in the games throughout the playoffs. You look at Josh Reynolds splits versus Jameis Williams. The only one he really went off was the uh, San Francisco game. And by the way, Josh Reynolds probably would have been right there or pretty damn close had he not dropped those two passes. Well, he did. But I think and that's it, a huge part of it. He did, but you know what else he did? He produced in the LA Rams game and he did produce in the Buccaneers game too. Like I'm not, I'm not turning a blind eye to that. Like you'd be. Yeah, but saying we know what this offense is with Josh Reynolds. We in do. It. Josh Reynolds is not it's a top an X three. factor in this offense. He's this offense will this move offense. on and be just as good and just as elite as it was without Josh Reynolds. You're not losing this factor that holds the offense together like that that i'm not buying into at all easy we'll see the thing i think about is obviously that nfc championship game and the drops we know he was a big part of key plays and first downs in that rams game he caught a touchdown as well he's been that guy for jared goff throughout his career but like spenmo has alluded to in the past jared goff makes josh reynolds it's not the other way around mm -hmm. and in my eyes I never wanted him back because of we saw what he was in the biggest moments of the Detroit Lions history in my eyes. In the biggest moments, he made two really key drops. And in my eyes as well, Brad Holmes saw that. Dan Campbell saw that. Maybe that's why that they didn't bring him back as well because they couldn't trust him in the biggest moments. They no. went to him on the fourth down and they and he dropped it. So, yeah, so, so yesterday, in the biggest moment, they didn't want to bring him back after they saw him maybe drop two big balls. That's not the case. Just because yesterday when this, Brad Holmes got to speak and he, he told you how he, they got every, everybody they wanted, their, their grade A options. He, I, what, 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 plan A is what he referred to it as with uh, DJ Reader, Carlton Davis, Meek Robertson. The only other piece of that, plan A, was Josh Reynolds. And they, they just got outpriced. And we know how Brad Holmes shops and how Brad Holmes pays his contracts out. He's not going to match that. But they made, they made a point to speak on. They were still in contact with Josh Reynolds, and he was the other piece of the 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 plan A, and it just it diverted. But uh, I'm not as concerned. Like again, I, I you guys know how I feel about Ben Johnson. It's they're definitely gonna find somebody to replace it. I just felt more comfortable with Josh Reynolds being there. But that was part of Brad Holmes' plan A. I get that Jameson Williams has the cult following. I'm part of it. All right, I'm, I'm a Jameson Williams fan myself. But let's let's put it to you like this. Throughout the entire postseason last year, nine targets for Jamison Williams, right? That, that's your, that's the, uh, and in Spinney's case, wide receiver two, right? Nine targets for that guy. Josh Reynolds, seven in just the first game. Three in the game following that, and then four in the San Fran game. How many did he catch in that San Fran game easy out of those four targets? He caught one. Caught two in the previous one with the touchdown, and then he caught five against the LA Rams. He was a bigger piece of this offense than Jamison Williams. Oh, he, just he was. was. Oh, he, no he, doubt. He had a, a larger target share that drew stuff up specifically for him. I'm not, I, I'm not, and I'm not, I guess you take, you, you could refute back to you if There's you like. There's no doubt that the production went down when J-Mo came in, though. It doesn't matter if J-Mo was the one 
catching the balls, but the offense did not revolve around Reynolds when Jamison Williams got back. Maybe it opened things up for other guys easy. That's the part I'm saying. Well, I mean, even with Jamison Williams back, though, Reynolds got more stuff drawn up for him, more plays gone to him. And I'm talking about playoff games, too, not just regular season stuff. But we'll move on from that. He's gone. But yeah, Dead and gone. My question to you, I yeah. know he's dead and gone, but, like, does it obviously <laughs> leave a yeah, – shout out T.I. Um, does it leave a sour taste in your mouth that he did no. drop two massive balls? No, it happens. <laughs> I mean, can, can I be honest? Like, as somebody who, like, studied that game afterward, Sam Laporta two drops in that, too. The third down. Yeah. Oh, no, no, his third down. No so, one talks about that. Fourth down. He's a rookie. And third. They, didn't go, they didn't go Josh, to him on fourth down. They went to Josh Reynolds because they rely on him. If Josh Reynolds' whole thing is that he's this veteran who can do no wrong, then he's the one who should be catching those because he's the veteran in the big situation. Now, Sam now, Laporte now, is a rookie. I said he's a veteran that can do no wrong. Maybe he gives that argument, but I didn't say such things. You'll ex- but you'll accept a mistake, a rookie mistake from a rookie. No, I'm not. No, I'm not even viewing it as a rookie mistake. I'm just saying, like, he's pinpointed as the reason they lost that game which I think is ludicrous. If it was a touchdown, sure. Have that as a conversation all day. I, I, think, I think we all point to the field goal situations. Uh, you can point to the, the rookie mistake fumble of Jameer Gibbs. Like, there's so much more that led into that game as a loss. It, it's so much easier. And, and not even, please don't take it disrespectful, Nick. But like, in some form or fashion, like lazy to just like blame one guy in two plays. If, it, if there were scoring plays, Sure, but you also those are two fourth yeah. downs where I think we all agree we we're kind of scratching our head when we didn't go out there for field goals. Veldor off the face mask, Gibbs fumble. That's yeah, a, that's I a get it. Yeah, yeah. I I know what you mean, but the two biggest in my eyes were the Reynolds because we thought we could rely on him, but I mean, he did. He dropped and, those and all passes. and all of those guys. Sam Laporta, aside from Kendall Vildor, Sam Laporta, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs. They have and use the opportunities to make up for that. They have other opportunities where they get the ball. Sam, Josh Reynolds really doesn't. He's a guy that gets targeted, what, four times in a game. If you drop two of them, that's going to shine a lot more than Amon Ross St. Brown dropping one of his ten targets or J- or Jameer Gibbs fumbling one time in, in eight games. Like, it's it, it shines more because you were in that situation. You go to Josh Reynolds, who that's the – the three targets he gets, he drops two of them, and two of them were the biggest situations of the game. We gets more than three, four targets a game, but I think it's because they're fourth down, crucial moments. You're already on edge because you didn't go out there for the field goal. There was so much more that went into it. It's it's a team loss regardless, no matter what. Um, nope, his fault, his fault alone. That's fair. <laughs>